amethyst. It's been worn for protection and courage, and even to prevent drunkenness. But mankind has been intoxicated by its purple hue for thousands of years, from the ancient Egyptians to modern day collectors. And we're headed straight to the source of some of the world's best. My name is Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. For the last 35 years, I've traveled the world in search of the finest gems, crystals, and minerals. Now, I'm taking you along with me. Oh, it's humid in here. <laughs> we'll visit some of the richest mines and discover just what it takes to unearth these natural treasures. It's gonna be one heck of an explosion. It's okay, come on. Amethyst is one of my best-selling minerals, and in my opinion, the best amethyst comes from Bolivia. I travel here several times a year to stock up. The source of these stones is a mine located deep in the jungles of eastern Bolivia. The company that operates it is headquartered in the modern metropolis of Santa Cruz. I'm here to meet up with Ramiro, who will be our guide to the Anahi mine renowned for its production of amethyst and the unique mineral, ametrine. Ramiro and his father operate the country's largest gem mining and processing company and have exclusive rights to the mine. It's a large-scale operation that processes huge amounts of amethyst transported from the mine. There are bags and bags, literally tons of amethyst here, ready to be graded and processed. This is rough. Fresh rough coming from the mine. This is how it looks when it gets from the mine. Gem rough is a raw gem mineral which can be cut and polished into gemstones. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this needs to be uh, graded. Uh, we do a grading process, selecting which rough is going to continue the process and uh, which rough is going to be sell as it, as it is. And you can you get gemstones out of this quality also? Oh, yes. Oh, really? Actually, the oh. gemstones are inside. Uh -huh. That's why I'm, I'm going to show you in the process how we process it uh, to, to get into the gems. Oh, so okay. Hidden gems. Yes. Well, yeah, you can see in, in some of these here that, they, uh, that it's clear down in the center. So, uh, okay, let's see how you process these things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Over the years, they've developed some new methods which have helped change the gemstone market. Throughout most of South America and in Africa, they hammer the rough, chipping away at the bad parts with a small hammer. And that's how they started here, too. But about eight years ago, they began using diamond blades to saw it off. It's much more precise, and it's resulted in better yields and bigger stones. I got to do some cutting myself, but when I looked around at all the taped up fingers, I was a little bit worried. Okay, you are good. Do you have some free time? <laughs> you hire me? <laughs> uh, I was telling you, sometimes people are very afraid when they look this process because they think they can cut out their fingers. Actually, the blade is a diamond blade. It will only uh, cut quartz, but not, not, not your fingers. So it's not as dangerous as it looks. OK, so I wasn't in danger of cutting my fingers oh, no. off over there. Okay. <laughs> there are four steps to the sawing process. Each one is bringing them a little closer to the final product. In the end, they're left with little blocks of gem rough ready to be sold or faceted into gemstones. This is the fourth step. All the people here is doing the same work. These are already clean stones. So these are ready to be acid, ready to be, really. yeah, graded and, and ready to, to sell it. So this is what they look like after they've been all trimmed up and all of the bad stuff's been taken away. These are ready to be made into faceted or cut stones. Now some of the uh, rough they take and they facet it themselves to use in their jewelry. But what I do. I buy the natural crystals, it's the natural crystals of amethyst and the unique ametrine crystals.
Amitrine is different in that it's amethyst and citrine all in the same stone. Both are different types of quartz that contain tiny little amounts of iron. That's what gives them their color. Ramiro knew I was coming, so he had all of the ametrine crystals unpacked and laid out for me to go through. They had a beautiful lot and I got to pick out the very best. When selecting the crystals, I look for three main things. Depth of color, a good separation of color, and most importantly, condition. Some crystals, like this one here, have dings on the end, or they've been banged when they're taken out of the mine. And this is something that collectors don't like at all. A piece like this, which is one of the ones I really like, would sell for more than $1,000, maybe $1,500. Where a piece like this, which has a big ding on the end, is not desirable to collectors, and they wouldn't pay more than a, a couple of hundred dollars for it tops. So you have $1,500, $200, a big difference in price. Santa Cruz is where I buy all of the nice ametrine crystals. But to get the large clusters of amethyst, I have to travel to Ramiro's other smaller facility in Puerto Suarez. <laughs> Along the banks of the Laguna Casares, in one of the largest wetlands in the world, lies Puerto Suarez. It was founded in 1875 by a Bolivian explorer who envisioned a utopia. Instead, this border town is known more for its contraband trade with Brazil than its scenic views of the Pantanal. Throughout the late 1800s, Puerto Suarez flourished as a major trade center, but a drop in rubber prices in the early 1900s led to the city's decline. Today, there is renewed interest in the area thanks to ecotourism. But jobs are still limited, and the people sustain themselves as they have for generations, fishing the local waters. A few fishermen have even opened up small outdoor restaurants where they serve a local favorite, piranha. This place may not look like much, but Ramiro said it's the best. This is surubi. It's kind of like a catfish. Oh, let's see the piranha. Ah, yeah. oh, this is a piranha. <laughs> oh, mira. Ooh, those are sharp. Look at, those, look at those teeth. I wouldn't want those biting me. <laughs> I'd had piranha before, but the only people brave enough to try it on this trip were the two women. Leslie, who ordered the piranha soup. Here's the piranha. Oh my gosh, his teeth are in there. <laughs> Is it smiling at you? And my daughter, Karina, who got the fried piranha. Okay. I think uh, my piranha eat your piranha. <laughs> Karina ordered a piranha. And she got a piranha. <laughs> <laughs> Can I show it to the camera? Here? <laughs> it's my lunch. <laughs> oh, it's got a piranha. <laughs> I don't really want to look at it. Has it got a tongue in there? It's got a tongue or something. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it was pretty good. So if you ever get a chance to eat piranha, give it a try. It tastes a lot better than it looks. Look up Puerto Suarez in a travel guide and you'll be lucky to find anything at all. But minerals worth thousands of dollars pass right through here all the time. It's the closest town to the Anahi mine and it's where all the material comes to be graded and sorted. Like the town itself, the warehouse is not much to look at. It's nothing like their facility in Santa Cruz. Here it's just a small house, but there's a big yard full of amethyst clusters and points. A cluster is a mineral specimen that consists of multiple crystals. Everything that's produced in the mine comes first here to Puerto Suarez, and from Puerto Suarez we ship it to Santa Cruz to be processed. What we are, you are seeing here in, in Puerto Suarez 
is the part of the clusters and collection pieces that we offer to the market. This right here is probably my favorite piece of the whole lot. The reason I like this one so much is because it's kind of like a flower, a natural flower of amethyst. Crystals are shooting out in all directions. They're large and of really beautiful color. Once it gets cleaned up, it's going to be an incredible piece. Yeah, we don't bring a, a whole lot of people here. Actually, our, our cluster production is very pretty limited. So I have a few customers in Brazil, and then I have Thomas in the U.S. So uh, I, I think Thomas is the only one of my clients that it's really picky, and he spends money flying here just to pick the stones and make sure that they are the way he wanted. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> the points and clusters are all categorized by size and color, and they're organized in grades A through F. Oh, <laughs> this is a beautiful piece. You made a mistake by putting it in D. It I can be. move it. No. <laughs> they had a great lot of amethyst there. They had really nice clusters, and they had a great assortment of single points. This along the edges here, where it's like multi-terminated around the front edges, it's called a castling effect, and a lot of people really like that. So is it Crystals. more valuable if it has that around it? Yeah, actually it is. It's quite desirable with a lot of collectors. You see that with the, the multi-terminations around here? That's probably, that's probably occurred when there was uh, changes in heat. It, it got hot and then cold and then hot and cold. It's called an interrupted growth. It's one of the unique properties of the uh, Anahi mine. In the end, I think I got a good deal and some great amethyst. Of course, you never really know until you get everything home and all cleaned up. With all my buying out of the way, the business end of my trip is over but the adventure is just beginning. The Anahi Mine is located deep in the jungle near the border with Brazil. As the crow flies, it's just over 90 miles from Puerto Suarez. But Ramiro suggested we take the scenic route, a six hour, 150 mile boat ride through the Pantanal. He chartered us a couple of boats from the Bolivian Navy. That's right, despite being a landlocked country, Bolivia has a small naval force to curb smuggling on its borders. Since there's not much action, they frequently hire out their fleet for private and commercial use. Okay, Thomas, so we're we are all set. The, oh, bo the boats are ready, you know, oh, cool. I, I got the Navy to give us some good boats for the trip. Can we take a look at them? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, great. This looks good, man. I think that'll that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, actually, that is not our boat. It's this one, the, the boat we're going to take. It's so, this one? This one, right. Oh. The aluminum one. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that's right. Oh. Actually, this is the fastest boat we can get to the mine. Oh. You know, they have bigger boats, but will take like four more hours. Oh, four yeah. more hours. Yes. Okay. This is a long trip through the Pantanal that is filled full of alligators and anaconda and piranha. And they gave us a couple of dumpy little boats to go in. Uh, they said though that they would repair the holes before we left. Right in the heart of South America, right in the middle of nowhere, this is the Pantanal. Covering approximately 65,000 square miles, it's the largest wetlands on the planet. Surrounded by dense jungles sheltering the world's largest concentration of wildlife, you can't help but feel like a modern day explorer traveling into the unknown. The further 
we go, the more isolated it feels, with only the occasional farm and a few rickety shacks lining the shores. Needless to say, if you get in trouble out here, there's no one around to help. trip here now. This is not where it's only the engine. Come on in. ¿Qué pasaba? Era mañoso. Eh? Era mañoso. Era mañoso. What's mañoso? How can I know? <laughs> <laughs> How can I know? <laughs> That's not very encouraging. <laughs> This is not the kind of place you want to get stuck. The Pantanal has flesh-eating wolves and jaguars on land, and flesh-eating crocodiles, anaconda, caiman, and piranha in the water. But the worst are the flesh-eating mosquitoes who <laughs> descend on you that. hundreds at a time. Nice dance. Yeah. Where's the music? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of mosquitoes. <laughs> Not everything here is out to get you, though. The wildlife's incredibly diverse. And while it's often overshadowed by the Amazon, the Pantanal is one of the best places in the world for viewing wildlife, and one of the most naturally beautiful places I've ever seen. Because of our continuing engine trouble, our six-hour boat ride lasted 16 hours, with us arriving well after dark. We're all really happy to be back on dry land, but our journey to the mine is not over yet. This long, overgrown road cuts a narrow path through the jungle from the water's edge to the mine. It's a bumpy ride, especially for our two cameramen bouncing around in the back of the pickup. Yes. Whoa! As we're driving through the jungle, uh, Alex caught a bird. It looks like a small, it's a, what they call a small owl. He went, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, Alex didn't have any dinner tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. We, we have an incredible cameraman. He's multi-talented. <laughs> a lot further down than the ones we've been in before. Deep in the jungles of eastern Bolivia, far below the surface of the earth, is a world of natural wonder, where the most basic elements combine to form some of the most unique crystals known to man. For the last 20 years, Ramiro's company has been working to bring this world to the surface through a complex series of underground tunnels. Above ground, the Anahi mine is unlike any other mine I've ever visited. I mean, it isn't exactly what you'd call roughing it. It's isolated, but not completely cut off, and reminds me of a summer camp I went to as a kid. The miners stay out here for shifts of 30 to 60 days at a time and live in small cabins on site. The company's done everything they can to make life at the mine feel a little more like home. With a nice soccer field and even Wi-Fi, it's the cleanest, most organized mine I've ever seen. They employ about 100 people, including a small cooking staff who prepared some of the best food I've had since arriving in Bolivia. Some of the meat's raised right here, but the rest of the food is trucked in, along with everything else needed to sustain day-to-day -day operations. While it may be nice, it's no vacation for the miners. The work here is tough 
working long hours excavating huge amounts of gym rub. But as far as the miners go, these guys have it pretty good. The Anahi mine has a lot going for it. It produces some of the world's best amethyst and is pretty much the only source for ametrine. But it's got another claim to fame, a natural wonder hidden nearly 100 feet underground. But before we go into the mine, we're told a little bit about the customs of the mining community. Throughout Bolivia, the miners all chew coca leaves. It staves off their hunger and thirst, and it gives them a boost of energy. But it also plays an important part in a ritual that they believe keeps them safe while they're working underground. They think, you know, everything that is in the surface, it's governed by God and everything that it's under the, the surface, it's governed by a devil. So they actually call devil Tio, and they give them uh, coca leaves, uh, they give the, uh, him alcohol, you know, they give him uh, cigarettes to let them work at the mine and be safe. This is alcohol. Oh. Maybe the guy will not get angry with me while doing this. Yes, it's a good one. The miners won't uh, take this alcohol and drink it? or No, no. Or they it's, won't take the coca leaves? It's forgiven. Leaves? Yeah. Forgiven. What would happen? What would happen if they did? It's forgiven to take this because what they believe is that God will get angry, and probably will take its life, oh, in okay. in uh, retri retrieve. Okay. All right. Well, so we won't drink any of the alcohol. Or... No, 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 no. You have some coca leaves. Yes, I got oh, some. Good. Only for you. <laughs> Special for you. It's not necessary for you to to put all. Um, as, uh, too much uh, coca leaves, just a few, and uh, well, be part of the ritual. Okay, so I just take a little and... Uh, just a little. And then I'll leave it right there, right? Yes. Okay. Tio, protect me. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. Tio one. It's more like Tio, don't kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's no wonder they believe this is the devil's lair. You can feel the temperature drop as you climb down. The air smells musty, it's dark, and the only living things down here are bugs and bats. There are about six kilometers of tunnels here, some of them nearly 300 feet deep. It's an eerie feeling being this far beneath the Earth's surface. To extend the tunnels, they use a combination of drilling and blasting, making small holes in the tunnel walls for the charges. But all of the excavating is done by hand. All of these tunnels follow quartz veins, but one vein led them to what is now the pride of the Anahi mine. This is believed to be the world's largest gem pocket. It was discovered in 1993, but because it's such a natural wonder, they've left it intact all these years. Their hope is to take it out in its entirety, but that would be a really huge feat of engineering. The cavity's about 20 feet deep, and they estimate it'll weigh almost 50 tons when it's taken out. That's a lot of amethyst. Really beautiful. Man, this is just something, just being able to be in a cavity like this. Not only is its size impressive, but also the quality of the crystals. Amethyst points are not usually this big with this good of color, and they're exceptionally clean. You see, usually amethysts are found caked in mud and covered in iron stains. But over the years, this cavity's been washed clean, revealing the natural beauty of this amazing discovery. It's just amazing up here. But to take this out as a whole would be really hard. It's an 
it's, it would be, and really heavy, but boy, it would be a wonder in some, some museum. In South America, they have an expression, Pachamama, which is basically Mother Earth. Being in this cavity feels like being in the womb of Pachamama. There's a tranquility about it that makes you relaxed and comfortable and excited all at the same time. It's a wonder. It's just a, a true wonder. Um, can you bring me my lunch? I'd like to stay here for a while. If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.